In 2008, according to a US congressional study, the total value of arms deals made in the developing world was nearly $42.2 billion. The value of weapons delivered to the developing world last year was $18.3 billion. And these are just the legal shipments. So who's doing the selling? The US is by far the biggest dealer, accounting for 41% of arms deliveries to developing nations, followed by Russia, China, Germany, the UK and France. Africa expert Ayo Johnson joins me now uh, from our London studio. What's it like, Ayo Johnson, for people in Africa to be watching um, these convictions going on in Paris? Well, it's, it's, they're looking at it like everybody else, thinking, well, what is going on? Clearly, um, these arm deals have been going on for some time, and they're looking at it and thinking, well, it's, it's about time that someone is actually found guilty for some of these atrocities, because um, clearly the arms sales is a billion-dollar industry. Um, it destabilizes regions. It affects governments. It actually keeps politicians in power necessarily. It actually controls population, and it impacts directly on communities who are affected and trapped in civil wars and disabilities that happens on right. the African continent. Right. But I, 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 th mm -hmm. I think we've... Ayo Johnson, do you mind talking specifically about what effect these arms sales had in Angola? Well, in Angola specifically, the arms sales have fueled a war in excess of 27 odd years. It had prevented um, uh, people from coming to the negotiating table much earlier. It has actually left a large depopulation filled with arms. A lot of the people on the, on the streets and in the communities have arms. They've not been displaced. Um, they've not been disarmed. You have a community that's been displaced largely. We have large numbers of refugees. Um, uh, and the argument that's being put forward that um, the, it's, it's more to, in terms of protecting the um, national interest. It's not good enough. Um, a lot, right. Large numbers of women have been raped. And, uh, and of course, you will find that um, communities have been affected directly, leading to abject poverty, simply because of the fact that the wars, the instability, and, uh, and of course, the, this stems directly to the ammunition that are being sold to these particular countries. Um Mr. Johnson, we just heard in that report by David Chater that there is a lot of stake in terms of relations between uh, France and Angola. The French uh, President Nicolas Sarkozy went in May to uh, Angola to try and build uh, men fences rather with President Dos Santos. Um, can you talk about what the future of French Angolan relations are going to be after the, the apparent fury which um, uh, Dos Santos uh, reacted with when he heard about the trial? Well, yes, I mean, President Santos was furious. He didn't want the trial to go ahead. He'd asked specifically for the French to throw the, the case out uh, because he thought that um, their trade, their military secrets would be exposed and put in the open. Um, and this has put a significant strain on French relationship. Nicolas Sarkozy has tried endlessly to ensure to try and heal the wounds. But it's a serious problem because it means that the uh, lucrative contracts, which are clearly being negotiated as we speak, um, some have been controlled by by the French would be up for grabs by other players, be it the Chinese or be it the Russians, or, or in this particular case, even the Brazilians are in the mix altogether. Ayo Johnson, expert on Africa, thank you very much indeed for joining us live from London.